This is my latest book. It's called So Outdoor Living and it's absolutely jam-packed full of ideas for you for your garden, whether you're having garden parties or you simply want to enjoy your time in the garden. But there's lots of projects in here also that you can adapt for use inside. So we've got different types of cushion covers, lots of hints and techniques as well, and information about the tools that you're going to need, different types of tablecloths and placemats. So again, you can see you can use these indoors as well. Um, there's a whole section on um, using hessian and burlap. So I'm going to show you in this little video as well um, different ways of using it. There's even a full-size teepee here and little stools that you can sit on. And there's a game for the kids to play to entertain themselves in the summer months as well. Um, different levels of sewing. So if you're a complete beginner, there's something for you and there's something for you to aspire to as well. So you can learn different techniques throughout the course of the book. But this is the kind of thing that you find in there. So there's the barbecue roll. What a great gift idea this would be. As you open it up, there's somewhere to keep all of your tools and to keep the shop it's protected from sticking through when you're storing all of your tools. Um, this is the picnic blanket. So this all rolls away so it's easy to carry around with you. So it's got a strap that goes around the top like so. And when you open it all up, it's lovely and thick and padded, but it's also got a vinyl backing to it, so you can put it on grass that's maybe slightly damp without worrying about the, the wet coming through. Now, there is a rather posh dining area for our fresco dining, um, and these cushion covers, I think, look absolutely stunning. But if you are a beginner, you may find the one that looks like a Christmas cracker a little bit easier to make. So you can see what I'm saying about different levels of sewing. Now then, while you're out in the garden, maybe the kids need entertaining. So inside this tote bag are a whole host of bees and ladybirds. And the outside of the bag then becomes, whether you call it noughts and crosses or tic-tac-toe. So that's a fun little game for you. And they're all in their own storage. And there's even a jewel bottle holder. And again, this is nice and strong and sturdy with a strap that goes all the way around the bottom. So you can put quite heavy glass bottles in here as well with a pocket on the side for you to keep your corkscrew in. And you can hold two rather large bottles inside there. That could be maybe in a, um, a festive fabric if you're going around to somebody's house at Christmas time. So again, all of the projects, although I've designed them for your garden or your outdoor living area, don't necessarily have to be so. Now, I did talk about hessian or burlap as it's called on the other side of the pond. And this is the tablecloth that I made to go outside. So you can see it gets a really rustic feel. I've threaded ribbon around here and I've stenciled with fabric paint some hearts. But this is a technique that you can then use to make these lovely little candle holders um, and decorate these with oh dried flowers or silk flowers or anything that you've got in your stash, really. So I'd put um, one of those little battery operated battery operated tea lights inside there and let it just flicker around and that'd be nice to hang in the trees outside um, and even decorated bottles for the kids pop in the same way and this is so easy and a lot of this doesn't even need sewing so if you're sewing so if you're sewing with um, hessian or burlap I've got a few tips for you first of all how to cut it in a straight line so I just fold that before it off the table because no matter how careful you are trying to follow in between the the string like grain of your hessian is really quite difficult and time consuming so what we're going to do is to pull one of the strands quite firmly and this will pull all the way out of your hessian. So just very gently pull this along. If it snaps, it doesn't matter. You can always pick it up from the point where it breaks. And you can see already, I'm starting to see a line where I'm pulling the thread from. And you can do this in quite a long strip, all in one go. 
And when you've pulled the piece of string out, don't throw that away because that's the kind of thing you can use to tie around jam jars. So that could be decorative. So now I've got the line that I can see. So when I cut it out, I'm cutting exactly a straight line. And that's important if you're going to fray your fabric because now as I pull away the strands to fray, I've got an even fringe all the way around. So to make placemats to match with my tablecloth, and this is just the same method as I used with the tablecloth, I've already cut this square, and these can be any size that you like. This one is about 10 inches by 12 inches, but make them bigger, make them smaller, make coasters if you like, make them rectangular, make them uh, square. I'd avoid circles though. And then just down the side, I'm going to leave a fringe of around about half an inch. And then I'm using tweezers just because I find it easier to grab hold of these very small pieces. And I'm going to just pull one of the strands out. The first one's always a little bit, uh, a little bit stiffer to pull. The next one's going to be easier because it's got a gap next to it. So pull out the second thread. Until I've got a gap, it looks a bit like a ladder, that's going to be wide enough to thread ribbon through. So if you're using a quarter of an inch width of ribbon, then you only need a quarter of an inch width of gap. If you're using a wider ribbon, then you make the gap a little bit wider. And don't worry too much if, as you're fraying, this end bit wants to come away. Let's just peel that off, that's fine. So peel away as many of these as you need to. And you do that in all four directions on all four sides. And then to stop the mat fraying even further, I've taken a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine, quite a wide one, and just zigzagged all the way around here. You could use a little bit of fabric glue uh, that dries clear or a fray stop or something like that. But if you're impatient and you want to get on with making it, you don't want to wait the glue to dry, then just a zigzag stitch is going to be fine. And you can probably tell just looking at this from above, um, you can't actually see the zigzag stitch. So it's not like an embroidery stitch. Then we're going to take our ribbon and cut this long enough so that you can tie a bow at each corner and then you'll need a bodkin of some sort to thread the ribbon through that could be um, a safety pin if you don't have anything like this and I'm going to take my bodkin over and under every three or four straps or strands of the of the ladder and again, don't worry about this being absolutely perfectly spaced. This kind of rustic look does look very, very handmade. So it's nice to see a little bit of imperfection. So just carry on. There we go. Try to make sure that your ribbon isn't twisted. That one is, so I'm just going to untwist it with the help of my tweezers. So that it all sits flat. And then we'll carry on and do that on the other three sides. So now that's all nice and flat, all I'm going to do is to, let's pull this ribbon up through from the back. And I'm just going to tie the corners into bows. So you can see it's a really quick and easy placement to make, but it's also very affordable. This fabric really isn't expensive to buy. And if you have a shop around, you can actually buy it um, printed as well. And although the shades tend to be neutral, they are available in different shades as well. So in fact, I think even greens, so they could be greys or beiges. And you've got different weights and um, uh, denier, for want of a better word, different kind of closenesses of weaves, if that makes sense. So again, just tie these into bows. 
Fabric painting with hessian is really fun. Or if, like in the book, you want to use stencils, then that's a nice idea too. Let's just tie off my final corner. And placemat number one is finished. Make as many as you like. So there's the placemat, which matches the tablecloth. And in fact, that's an extra little project for you. There are 22 in the book altogether. Um, and the whole of the Hessian section only classes as one project. And there's quite a few because the bunting behind me is included in there as well. So I hope you enjoy the book. And most of all, I hope you enjoy making your projects. <laughs>